Hello everyone. Let us look at uh, the image enhancement techniques. First of all, what is meant by an image enhancement? Image enhancement is all about improving the quality or the perception of the image. So uh, there are two types of uh, enhancements that we generally do. Either it can be a visual enhancement or it can be a feature enhancement. Visual enhancement is all about making uh, the image to look more, uh, you know, appealing to the human eye. And feature enhancement is about uh, improving the features for a specific application. Image enhancement is more of a application specific. An enhancement technique which works for one application may not work for the other one. So this is uh, very important. Uh, the method that we need to use, the technique that we need to use, it is completely application specific. So we have an input image. We apply the input image to the enhancement uh, you know, that the you know, which is specific to the application we are considering. We obtain a better image in terms of uh, application required. So we can do this either in spatial domain or in frequency domain. Spatial domain will directly manipulate uh, the pixel values and in frequency domain we take the image and uh, into the frequency domain, do the modification there and get back to the spatial domain. This is what we generally do in frequency domain image enhancement techniques. So in spatial domain we have uh, let us say the input image is f of x comma y and the output image is g of x comma y. So g of x comma y is equal to a transformation which is representing our uh, image enhancement technique. Transformation on f of x comma y. Generally in spatial domain image enhancement technique we will have mask which means that the pixel value in the output image depends on the pixel value at the given location, let us say x comma y, and its neighbors. This neighborhood can be a single point location itself, x comma y, or 3 by 3 neighborhood, or a 5 by 5 neighborhood, or an entire image itself. It depends if pixel value location x comma y in the output image if it depends only on the pixel value at location x comma y in the input image and we call such techniques as point processing spatial domain technique or simply point processing technique point processing method if it is depending on 3 by 3 neighborhood or 5 by 5 neighborhood of the location x comma y in the input image, then we call that as neighborhood method. If it is depending on the entire image, then we call that as global image enhancement technique. So let us first look at uh, the point processing techniques. The first one shows a contrast uh, enhancement technique. So what do I mean by contrast enhancement? Sometimes the image might contain only particular, uh, you know, uh, uh, only pixel values in a particular given, you know, a particular uh, dynamic range of values. Let us say we are using 8 bits for quantization, then the input is supposed to have values between 0 to 255. If I have taken the image in dark conditions without uh, light, uh, then the image will have more of uh, intensity, you know, intensity values, smaller intensity values. Let us say between 0 to 100. Most of the intensity values will be in between 0 to 100 and will have very few pixels from 100 to 255. Although we have a dynamic range from 0 to 255, having uh, oh, intensity values between 0 to 100 it means that, you know, we, we, are, we are not using the complete dynamic range. Contrast stretching is all about uh, stretching uh, 
the intensity values in the image from 0 to 100 to 0 to 255. It can be other way also. We can stretch it the other way from higher intensity values to lower intensity values. This is about contrast enhancement. This is a nonlinear curve we have. Generally, what we do, we, uh, we generally take a piecewise linear uh, approximation of this, which we'll see uh, in this session itself. The next thing it is shows you know, ideal uh, case of one of the case of uh, contrast enhancement. So you know, this slope became infinite here and have only two values. So this is basically a thresholding technique. The value, the intensity value is greater than k, then I will make that as 255 the output image, otherwise I will make it as 0 in the output image. If the intensity value in the input image at a given location, it is greater than k, then we will make the value to be equal to 255 in the output image, otherwise we will make it as 0 in the output image at the given location x comma y, let us say. So these are uh, uh, different uh, things that we can do. We can take a logarithmic transformation. We can take negative image, negative transformation, or we can take nth root transformation, or we can take nth power transformation. So this is uh, image negative. Image negative is simply taking transform. Let let uh, the transformation is given by s is equal to transformation of r. R is representing the intensity value in the input image and s is representing the intensity value in the output image so s is equal to l minus 1 minus r meaning that i am subtracting the input in the intensity value in the input image from the maximum value l minus 1 where l is uh, 2 power n n is the number of quantization bits number of bits used for quantization so here if i assume small n equal to 8 the value of L will be equal to 256. So L minus 1 will be equal to 255. So S is equal to 255 minus R is this density, uh, is this transformation, spatial transformation. If I put R equal to 0, S will be equal to L minus 1. If I put R is equal to L minus 1, I will get S is equal to 0. So all the low intensity values will become uh, brighter values. All the bright values will become low intensity values here you can see this is uh, you know these intensity values are small and uh, the negative of it will have a uh, higher uh, intensity values and this is a, a mammograph image which is used for detection of uh, breast cancer it is very unfortunate uh, that in india one woman one woman out of four women is suffering from breast is dying of breast cancer as per a report uh, i don't remember the year name don't don't worry uh, the point is that in india people unnecessarily feel shy to talk about uh, these things to the doctor even you know to even, even to the doctor which is very unfortunate people will die of this cancer if it is not uh, detected in early stages however let us not uh, deviate from the point uh, this transformation here it is used uh, to make the image more appealing to the eye by you know uh, by the negative transformation this is uh, you can see that this is a cancer uh, uh, tissue that we uh, have in the breast which is detected using uh, the image processing techniques there is the next thing is log transformation technique s is equal to c logarithm of 1 plus r this is uh, very much used you know this is used in uh, the case of uh, displaying uh, the spectra of the image i think you have done it in the case of uh, uh, the dft which is given as an assignment to you you are supposed to plot the spectrum of the image so this is the spectrum of the virginal uh, uh, spect virginal image. Uh, what happens? The Fourier transform it gives compact representation. Uh, when, when 
and because of that compact representation most of the values in the spectrum you know they will be near zero and few values they have very high value when we try to visualize uh, this sort of a <coughs> spectrum we will have all the you know because of uh, the large dynamic range we will not be able to see the differences that are happening in the smaller quotients relatively smaller quotients let us say one quotient is let us, uh, near 100 uh, you know 108.6 and the, uh, the remaining quotients are uh, let us say 2.1 3.5 8.6 2.3 2.8 .3, 2 so on because of that 100 value which is sitting at the center the remaining values all those values they almost look like zero because of the large dynamic range and if i want to see the variation in the smaller values also then the only way is to reduce uh, the peak uh, which is sitting at the middle the value of the peak uh, if i if i reduce then we are going to have uh, you know then we will be able to represent uh, the things which are you know the finite details of the image also finite details of the spectrum also let us see that actually so i have a hidden image points.png computed uh, Fourier transform of it by using FFT2 then I'm doing that FFT shift in order to uh, shift that uh, to the center part of the spectrum center part of the image then I am displaying uh, uh, the absolute uh, value of that uh, spectrum which will give us a uh, uh, magnitude spectrum so if I do that then this is what I got you can see uh, a brighter uh, spot at the middle which is uh, having uh, a higher you know uh, a large value and when I'm moving uh, away from the center all the values become zero that is supposed to happen because uh, the image uh, mostly will have uh, low frequencies smoother regions and very uh, few high frequencies uh, because few high frequencies because we get abrupt changes only at a very smaller number of pixels if I want to visualize the uh, what is happening here also what we need to do we need to do something called as a dynamic range compression that we can obtain by doing uh, the log logarithmic transformation so let us do that the logarithmic transformation I am doing the logarithmic transformation is a uh, uh, logarithm of uh, let us take uh, logarithm yeah logarithm I will take natural logarithm I will take no problem 1 plus absolute of this value I am doing that 1 plus here because this quantity may become 0. Logarithm of 0 give you an error. So, in order to avoid that, I am taking a 1 plus uh, absolute value of IMF here. There is a transformation definition also. So, if I do that, now you can see the variation in the finer uh, values also because the uh, mid value it became uh, relatively small now. Logarithm of 100 base 10 is 2. Logarithm of 10 base 10 is 1. So, the dynamic range from 100 to 10 is now reduced to 2 to 1. That is what we are trying to achieve here. This is logarithmic transformation. Let us do the mesh plot of this also, uh, just for uh, having more insights into this. The mesh plot uh, of this will look like this. Mesh of uh, this one, I will not have uh, this braces here. Mesh of this. okay and i want to uh, do the absolute value first then we go for uh, the logarithmic transformation yeah you can see the middle value and everywhere it is zero so you cannot see any sort of variations that are happening here but well, let us uh, move to the uh, log magnitude spectrum logarithm of a plus quantity yes you can see that here you can uh, see the variation 
in the finer parts of the spectrum also this is what the dynamic range compression means so the logarithmic transform it does a dynamic range compression the next thing is uh, yeah this is what we have already done next law the next thing is power law transformation this is generally used for uh, correcting uh, the display of the images uh, on uh, you know monitors and all so these are the curves for various values of gamma s is equal to cr power gamma is the transformation that are represented here really this is uh, going to do either uh, dynamic range expansion or dynamic range compression depending uh, on the value of uh, gamma so uh, if you see that this is uh, dynamic range uh, expansion gamma less than 1 and this is for uh, dynamic range compression for gamma greater than 1 this is a good example what we do in gamma you know the power law correction or gamma transformation or gamma correction let's so say we have this original image and when we display it on the monitor this is how it actually looks like it's because there is a degradation happening because of uh, the transfer function of uh, the monitor it, it is not uh, actually showing the original image but because of uh, the degradation associated with the monitor the image is being degraded and shown it here uh, and this degradation in general uh, follows s is equal to cr power uh, uh, let us say some theta s is equal to cr power theta then what we do in gamma correction we are going to do something like cr power 1 over theta so that uh, that thing will always result in uh, so a quantity which is proportional to r but not uh, something you know some power of r so uh, what we do we take uh, image and then we apply s is equal to cr power 1 over theta assuming that uh, this is uh, proportional to r power theta the transformation sorry uh, transfer function of uh, the monitor it is uh, some something related to r power theta not transfer function impulse response r power theta then what I do in gamma correction, S is equal to CR power 1 over theta I am going to do. And then display the image on the monitor so that uh, the original image, you know, the image which is displayed, it looks almost like the original image. This is what happens uh, in the gamma correction. So there are uh, several examples of gamma correction. S is, this is uh, for gamma is equal to 0.6. Point A is the original image. B is... Uh, for gamma equal to 0.6 and c is for gamma equal to 0.4 and then uh, this is for gamma equal to 0.3 we can see that as the value of uh, gamma is uh, decreasing uh, the contrast is varying and actually why we are doing this is we are trying to find out the crack that happened in the spinal cord it seems this is another example this is a poor uh, resolution image this is a poor contrast image uh, the, this is an uh, aerial image and uh, the transformation here uh, this is for gamma equal to 3 gamma equal to 4 and gamma equal to 5 dynamic range compression is what we did here we, we are going to do as I mentioned in uh, the first slide of uh, this session we are going to do contrast stretching using this wise linear transformation here so we used to see a nonlinear curve here we have approximated uh, that into three lines here this is the straight line which is passing through origin which is having some you know r is equal to s is equal to a constant multiplied with r and this is a straight line equation of the form uh, S is equal to R plus uh, uh, some S is equal to some M R plus C, and this is another straight line with a little slope when compared to this one. So this is the point. Uh, the slope of the middle region should be higher. 
So this is also will be of the form uh, sum S2 is equal to MR2 plus C. This region, if you see, the slope is very uh, high, it is greater than 1. So for a very small range in the intensity value here, we'll have a large change uh, here. If I take a small fraction here, the thing which is corresponding to this will be more. The dynamic range will be more. That is what I am trying to tell you. The dynamic range of the output image will be more. So, uh, as the slope of this is increasing, uh, the output image will have more and more uh, contrast. This is a poor contrast image where all the intensity values uh, are somewhere between 100 to 150. And this is a better contrast image uh, after up, you know applying uh, contrast stretching. And this is a high contrast image which is almost like a thresholded image like uh, a binary image. Binary image is uh, the highest contrast image. Here you can see this transformation is uh, intensity what do we call that intensity level slicing. So what we do here if the intensity value in the input image is in between A and B and we keep the value as it is otherwise we will make it take all the other values into another value. So this is sort of a thresholding again but it is double thresholding here. If it is less than a value then make it uh, 0. If it is greater than the value then also make it 0 otherwise make the value to be 1. Uh, not exactly 0 and 1 but I am going to club it with the thresholding that's why I have mentioned 0 and 1 here. This is uh, an aortic angiogram image and this is this transformation. <clears throat> These values are required for us that shown in white and all the other values uh, we made them into zero applying this uh, test is slicing. The next transform to keep uh, all the values the image as it is except the values which are in between A and B. The values which are in between A and B are shown in the uh, same intensity value. This is another sort of a conservation. Here you can see all these values are shown in the same intensity value and all the other values are kept to be the same value here. So this is actually used for finding out the blocks that happened in the the beans or uh, the arteries. The next one is uh, bit plane slicing. Bit plane slicing is all about uh, taking individual bits in the image. Let's assume that I have uh, 8 bits used for quantization. So this is uh, the LSB least significant bit and this is the MSB. We will have 8 bit planes in this. First bit plane uh, obtained by taking uh, all the values, all the intensity values in the image. I'm going to take uh, this significant bit of it and multiply it with one. Of course, I'm keeping the value same, and then take only that value as your intensity value. Okay, you it's just uh, making a uh, all the other bits to be zero taking only this value value corresponding to this one this is zeroth bit plane first bit plane is uh, make all the other bits zero and keep only this bit and find out the value of the image so find out the intensity value and second bit plane is this and uh, the final bit plane msb bit plane will have uh, will retain this bit and make all the other bits to be Zero and display the things. This is bit plane slicing. You can see that the most significant bit will have more information. This is the original image. Zero bit plane, first bit plane, second bit plane, third bit plane, fourth bit plane, so on. The seventh bit plane. You can see that seventh bit plane is almost uh, same as the uh, original image because it contains all the coarse uh, differences. And uh, when we when you move to the 
Where Bitplanes, it will have all the finer details in it. This is Bitplane slicing for you. Uh, more uh, explanation. Bitplanes uh, 8, 7. Okay, uh, image reconstructed using Bitplanes 8 and 7, which means that uh, 8 Bitplanes plus 7th Bitplane. This is 8th uh, Bitplane plus 7th Bitplane plus 6th Bitplane. This is 8 plus 7 plus 6 plus 5. When you are adding more and more uh, lower bit planes, you can see that more and more finer details getting added in the images. You can see this here, there is a structure here, which is uh, not present here. The next thing is histogram equalization, then histogram matching, then histogram, local histogram processing, then, uh, uh, okay, this part is not there for in your syllabus, so I'm skipping that. I'm going to skip that. First of all, what is histogram of an image? Histogram, you are all uh, very familiar with. You used to do that a lot in your uh, standard itself. Let us say there's a class. There's an exam conducted. What you used to do? You used to plot the histogram of uh, the results by taking, like, let us say, uh, I want to find out uh, the histogram uh, by taking bins between 0 to 10, 11 to 20, 22, 21 to 30, so on, 90 to 100. So, what we are going to do, we are going to count the number of students who got marks between 0 to 100, sorry, 0 to 10. Then we are going to count the number of students between 11 to, who got uh, marks between 11 to 20, so on, uh, from 91 to 100. And we are going to plot all these values and we call that as a histogram. Here also, what we are going to do, let us say I am taking 256 bins for an image which is having uh, 8 bits for quantization. So, 256 levels and 256 bins I am going to consider. So, I am going to count the number of uh, pixels which are having intensity value 0 and the number of pixels which are having intensity value 1. So, on the number of values which are having intensity value 255. So, if I plot, uh, if I call that count as h of uh, rk, where rk is the intensity value, then we will have this h of rk to be called as a histogram. <coughs> histogram of uh, the image, uh, let us do it uh, using MATLAB and C. So, let us uh, plot the histogram. Uh, of uh, the coins image by taking uh, the built-in function I am hist of I am will give us the histogram so this is that histogram you can see you have uh, 0 to 255 levels and for each level uh, there is a corresponding uh, value so this is 255 and you can see uh, it has more values between uh, 52, let us say somewhere near uh, 75 or 80. This is I am histo you know histogram for you. You can normalize this histogram by dividing uh, H of RK with the total number of pixels. So the normalized histogram is P of RK is equal to NK, the number of pixels having intensity values RK, divided by capital M into capital N, which is the uh, size of the image, capital M into capital N will give you the total number of pixels in the image. This is nothing but uh, the PDF of the image if you treat uh, the image as uh, a random variable. This is dark image, uh, so the intensity values are supposed to lie between uh, let us say 0 to 100. This is histogram of a bright image, so the intensity values uh, will be more uh, near 255. So you can see peaks uh, here. This is a poor contrast image because of which you know the intensity values are lying in a range in a given range let us say from 100 to 150 no values here no values here this is a high contrast image this high this is high contrast image because it contains all the values all the intensity levels almost uniformly so we can say that a high contrast image will have a uniform distribution of uh, pixels for know all the intensity values so for improving uh, the contrast of the image what we can do we can try to make uh, the histogram of the image uh, to be uniform meaning that all the intense 
you know all the intensity values in the image will have equal number of uh, pixels so let us see how do we equalize the histogram of uh, an image <coughs> need to obtain a transformation which does histogram equalization intensity levels in an image may be viewed as a random variable in the interval between 0 to l minus 1 let pr of r and ps of s denote uh, the probability density functions of uh, the random variables r and s so this is pr of r and this is s of s we are supposed to obtain a uniformly distributed uh, density variable for the output image we have the given uh, you know the histogram of the given input image it can be any arbitrary function but the output image after histogram equalization it should have uniformly distributed histogram uniformly distributed probability density function how do we do that we need to find out a transformation which does this task and the transformation should have three sorry, two properties the first property is that it should be a strictly monotonically increasing function in the interval from 0 to l minus 1 and the second property is that the value of uh, the tree of r should always be between 0 to l minus 1 and another property is that the transformation function should be always uh, continuous and differentiable we know one such uh, function which satisfies this equation which is nothing but the cumulative distribution function So s is equal to t of r, the transformation function. Let us assume that as a cumulative distribution function, which is equal to l minus one multiplied with uh, zero to r p r of w multiplied with uh, d w. So we will use this transform and let us see if we can uh, get a p s of s uh, to be uniformly distributed function or not. So you know that ds by dr is given by dt by uh, dr which is equal to l minus 1 into d by dr of uh, is integral d by dr of uh, the cumulative distribution function will be probability density function so this is equal to l minus 1 into pr of r in order to obtain ps of s we need to do pr of r multiplied with dr by ds so dr by ds uh, we have that as uh, uh, l minus 1 into pr of r substituting that here PR of R divided by L minus 1 into PR of R is equal to 1 over L minus 1. PS of S, we got it as a constant which is equal to 1 over L minus 1. Hence, uh, this is representing a uniformly distributed uh, random variable. So, we obtain a histogram uh, equalized thing. Let us see an example for continuous uh, random variable. Let us assume PR of R is equal to 2 or over L minus 1 whole square for 0 less than or equal to R less than or equal to L minus 1. For this given PR of R, we need to find out PS of S, the transformation we need to find out. So, how to do that? By come, you know, the transformation is given by the cumulative distribution function multiplied with L minus 1. So, S is equal to T of R is equal to L minus 1 multiplied with 0 to R, PR of W, DW, minus 1 integral over 0 to R, 2W divided by L minus 1 whole square DW. For 2W, it is W square by 2. So, in the limits 0 to r, so what we get is r square by l minus 1. So, this is the transformation that will be uh, giving us uh, the uniformly distributed output where output image, which is a histogram equalized image. For continuous case, this is the one, this is the case, but what we have is a discrete case, we have a discrete image. So, this is the approximation of uh, the cumulative distribution function, cumulative distribution function, which is uh, nothing but uh, this one k is equal to transformation of rk which is equal to l minus 1 summation over j equal to 0 to a pair of j this is simply summation of the probabilities uh, the value rk so this is nothing but l minus 1 multiplied with summation over j equal to 0 to k pr of uh, rj is given by nj divided by mn where nj is the number of uh, pixels which are having intensity value rj so this is nothing but l minus 1 divided by mn summation over j equal to 0 to k and j so how do we get that uh, the histogram uh, equalized value 
let us see an example uh, we have a 3 bit image so it will have uh, 0 to 7 in density values total number of pixels is 64 multiplied with 64 which is 4096 and uh, the histogram is already given to us uh, you may be asked uh, you know that there is an there might be an image already given to you and you might be asked to do you may be asked to do histogram equalization of that image in that case you have to find out the histogram by yourself again in this problem they have already given the histogram the given histogram is this the first step is to compute a uh, normalized histogram so 790 divided by 4096 1023 divided by 4096 so on uh, 81 divided by 4096 will give us its values and the next step for histogram equalization is to multiply this cumulative distribution no uh, to find out the cumulative distribution function actually so how to find out the cumulative distribution function just by summing up these values 0 0.19 and the next one will be 0 0.19 plus 0 0.25 the next one will be 0 0.19 plus 0 0.25 plus 0 0.21 so like that we are, we need to do so for s not uh, this is uh, summation of j equal to 0 to pr of rj which is nothing but 0 0.19 itself 0 0.19 multiplied with 7 is uh, 1.33 Rounding the value will give us 1. Next value, the next value S1 is obtained by adding these two and multiplying it with 7. So if I add these two and multiply it with 7, I got the value 3.08. If I round it off, then I will get the value 3. Next value is obtained by adding these three values up and multiplying it with the 7. So the value I got it to be uh, equal to 4.55. So the intensity, if I round it off, and the value which is corresponding to this value will be equal to 5. Similarly, for R4, I will get a value of 6.23, the cumulative distribution function. And when I round it, cumulative distribution function multiplied with 7, 6.23. And when I round it off, the value is equal to 6. For S5, it is 6.65, which is rounded off to 7. And once we get 7, all the remaining values will also be uh, coming to S7. So this is PR of RK, the histogram of uh, the given uh, maze and uh, this is I think but the transformation function you can see that it is monotonically increasing and uh, you can also see that it satisfies most of the properties although it is not a strictly uh, uh, increasing function. You can see uh, this is the transformation relation between RK and SK this is uh, obtained by you know uh, mapping uh, these values see 1 to uh, 0 to uh, 1 and uh, 1 the value corresponding value is 3 and 2 the corresponding value is 5 so on so this is what uh, we got here this is the transformation uh, function and the corresponding uh, histogram is uh, not actually exactly uniform this is very interesting you can see that you are you are supposed to get the uh, uniformly distributed uh, output image i mean to say the uh, histogram of the output image should be uniform but that is not actual case it happens because of the quantization uh, we did for a uh, discrete case because of the quantization the values which are in between let us say between 0 to 1 they are uh, going to remap to either 0 or to 1 and similarly the values which are between 1 and 2 they are remapped to either 1 or 2 because of such deviations uh, will not get exactly uh, uniformly distributed image but we will get a almost approximately uniformly distributed image I still uh, see uh, it got worked this is a dark image after uniform uh, after uh, uh, histogram equalization i got uh, a good contrast image this is a very bright image after histogram equalization we got a uh, uh, good contrast image this is poor contrast image after histogram equalization this is what we get is a good contrast image and still we get a good contrast image this you can see uh, the histograms are almost uniformly distributed except for the last one uh, there is one thing i want uh, even the last one is almost uniformly distributed sorry for that yeah this comes to new question what happens uh, uh, if i do histogram equalization to already good looking image which means that already good contrast image is histogram equalization always good we'll see that uh, answer to this question in near future very shortly we'll see that answer so these are the transformation curves for the first second third and fourth images yeah histogram equalization always good 
you can uh, see that here this is the original image and applied histogram equalization on that to obtain this image you can see that the histogram equalization is not always good histogram equalization is not always good it may work for you or may not work for you it only depends on your application whether it works or not it completely depends on your application the next thing is the histogram matching or histogram specification so uh, why do we need to always confine ourselves to a the output image which is having a, a uniform distribution instead of that uh, i want to get uh, my own uh, histogram for the output image we take the image and we do a transformation the and the output image is supposed to have the histogram specified by me by the user so this is what we are trying to do in histogram matching how do we do that this is simple uh, i know how to go from a to b and i know how to go from uh, uh, yeah c to b then how to go from a to c go from a to b and then uh, go from uh, uh, c to b and then come back from b to c so, so this is sort of a uh, uh, very common thing that we do right so how do we do that i know how to go from uh, pr of r the given input image uh, histogram or probability density function to uniformly distributed function which is ps of s and i know how to go from the specified histogram to histogram equalization ps of s of course by doing uh, uh, what we call uh, uh, this transformation l minus 1 multiplied with the cumulative distribution function so we do it for uh, both uh, the input image and the specified image and because we are doing uniformly you know we are doing histogram equalization for both the cases the resultant uh, the resultant uh, pf should be same for both the cases so s is equal to t of r which is l minus 1 multiplied with 0 to r pr of w dw g of z is also is equal to l minus 1 uh, multiplied with 0 to z z of t dt z of t dt this is also equal to s so this should these two should be same so s is equal to t of r uh, we have uh, this transformation and g of z we have so how to obtain g or z z is equal to g inverse of s which is g inverse of transformation of r i'm repeating we have s is equal to t of r which is equal to is also equal to g of z and i want to get z z is equal to g inverse of s which is equal to g inverse of transformation on r let's see a problem on histogram matching also okay what is the procedure first obtain the uniformly distributed uh, function uh, from pr of r by you know by taking the cumulative distribution function transformation and then do it for the histogram specified image also and then uh, from using these two we do mapping from uh, s to z by considering z is equal to g inverse of s so we'll see an example given a pr of r is equal to r by l minus 1 whole square and pz of z is equal to z square by l minus 1 whole cube what to do obtain ps of s for both the cases ps of s for the first case uh, is obtained by s is equal to t of r l minus 1 multiplied with g integral over 0 to r pr of w dw which we already obtained uh, in the previous example which is equal to r square by l minus 1 and for uh, histogram specified one we will have uh, the transformation p l minus 1 integral over 0 to z pz of t dt which is equal to l minus 1 integral over 0 to z t square by l minus 1 whole cube dt so this is uh, for t square it is t cube by 3 and 3 3 will get cancelled will get z cube by l minus 1 whole square these two are represent these two are equal which is equal to s so z is equal to g inverse of s is what i am doing it is given by l minus 1 whole square s the whole power 1 by 3 what is s a square uh, by l minus 1 l minus 1 and l minus 1 get cancelled so what we what i am going to get is a uh, r to the power of by t. yeah this is uh, only one term is going to get cancelled so what i am going to get is l minus 1 r square to the power over the power of 1 over 3 this is going to this transformation is going to give me histogram uh, matching from uh, r to z the discrete case uh, the procedure is more or less the same except that the integrals now are uh, replaced with the summations 
So SK is equal to transformation on RK, which is equal to L minus one multiplied by summation over J equal to zero to K. PR of RJ, which is given by L minus one divided by MN summation over J equal to zero to K and J. This is nothing but uh, the cumulative distribution function multiplied with the uh, minus one. And we'll do it for uh, the given histogram specification also. And uh, these two are supposed to be same. So the next step uh, is to map from SK to JA. Let us see an example. So the given values, uh, both x i and y are taking the values from zero to one to three, zero to three. So and p u of x i is given as 0.25 for all the values from zero to one to so on three. And p v of uh, y naught is given as uh, zero. P v of y one, which is nothing but uh, one, is given as uh, 0.5. P v of uh, two is also given as 0.5, and p v of three is also given as p v of three is given as zero. So the value of uh, the values u is taking is uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, and pu of xi all the values are uh, given as the uh, 0.25. So this is 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.25, and 0 0.25. This is actually a histogram uh, equalized image. So w will be almost you know uh, this is the same as s if you take. So if you find out the cumulative distribution function, so 0 0.25, 0 0.5. 0.75 1. This is obtained by 0 0.25 here and 0 0.25 plus 0 0.25 is 0 0.5 and then 0 0.25 plus 0 0.25 is 0 0.75. 0 0.75 plus 0 0.25 is 1. This is how we obtain this. And we need to do that again for uh, this variable yi. So it is given as 0. PV of uh, y0 is given as 0 and PV of y1 and y2 are given as 0 0.5. So if I do the equivalent distribution, then 0, and then 0. Plus 0.5 is 0 0.5, 0 0.5 plus 0.5 is 1. And then uh, we have uh, again uh, PV of y3 is 0, so this will be remaining as 1. However, we will not get anything value, any value greater than 1. So, next step is to map from uh, V to U or uh, you know U to V. In the previous notation, this is from uh, uh, yeah, R to Z. How do we do that? This histogram equalizes one, and this is also histogram equalization. Yeah, these two are representing uh, same values, supposed to represent the same values. But take first term, which is 0 0.25, such in this sequence, value which is greater than this, okay, uh, okay, uh, the smallest value in this, which is greater than this value, uh, 0 0.25 less than you know, greater than zero. So, don't discard this one. 0.25 is you know is less than 0.5. So the value which is mapping to this one, mapping to 0 is 1. And here uh, the next term is 0.5. The value which is uh, greater than or equal to actually it is not, not just greater than it is greater than or equal to 0.5 is 0.5 again. So 1 will be mapped to 1 again. Next one, next thing is 0 0.75. 0 0.75 the value which is just greater than uh, 0 0.7 greater than or equal to 0 0.75 is 1. So is mapped to 2 again and 1 is uh, 1 the value 1 again is mapped to 1 uh, here uh, you, you always need to take the smallest value so this is mapped to 2 is mapped to 2 here 0 is mapped to 1 1 is mapped to 1 2 is mapped to 2 3 is also mapped to 2 remember 3 is not mapped to 3 it is mapped to 2 because uh, you need to take uh, the smallest value possible okay so mapping is this this is histogram matching for you uh, the next thing is local histogram uh, processing. The local histogram processing is all about uh, you know uh, you do the histogram uh, process, histogram equalization or histogram matching, not uh, on the entire image, but on in in the neighborhood of the given pixel. Repeat that procedure for uh, each and every pixel. You will get the local histogram processing. So instead of doing the histogram equalization for the entire image, you are going to do the histogram equalization. In the neighborhood of the given pixel, this is the local histogram processing. So this is the original uh, image. It contains some inner, you know, finer details. You can see an A here and a slash here, some lines here actually. So if you do histogram global histogram equalization, uh, there's not not much a change inside these squares, but the background got changed. Uh, if you see, if you do the local histogram equalization, you can see the finer details got uh, improved. But there's a drawback here with local histogram equalization. You will get uh, 
something called as a checkboard effect because of because you are doing the passing based on the neighborhood you are supposed to uh, see a checkboard effect and that effect uh, will be more and more as the block size is increasing here the block size is small so that is why the checkboard effort effect is uh, yeah, actually it is visible here and see these dots and all coming up because of the checkboard effect only 